Here. Mr. Kogan. Here. Mrs. McKnight. Here. Salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The public meeting of Brown Council Brown and Providence County in Union City, New Jersey, has put notice has been given in accordance with PL 1975, Chapter 231. That an annual notice of revision was made in conformance to Section 13 of the Act. Before we start, I um, like to have a moment of silence for uh, Bev Rifkies, who died. She worked tirelessly for special needs youth, uh, not only uh, throughout the community, but she was on the Recreation Commission for, for decades. And she was, uh, her and her husband, Norman, were a great influence in town. Uh, the other thing I think we have to uh, have a moment of silence for the Nashville victims, uh, another sad event that happened. And people always ask me about the high school, the traffic, this, that, and the other thing. But the way we did it was because we wanted to make sure all the doors were locked and all the students go through one door. It's a safe, public safety issue. So let's say, a, let's have a moment of silence, please. Thank you. And God bless America. Okay, we have a proclamation designating April as Child Abuse Prevention Month, and we have uh, Gretchen and Heather here from the county, and flags will be placed in Centennial Park along Springfield Avenue uh, starting on Friday, March 31st. Come on up.
recognition is especially important now is uh, April to just stop some skin, and that is uh, National Child Abuse Prevention Month, a time where, when working with the further raise awareness about the use of these scissors, we blue flag facilities throughout the county and as many towns as possible. When you see one, a sea of blue flags, you know each flag represents four years in the child welfare system here at all, no fault of their own. It is critical these youth from birth to age 21 that we have their backs, not just during April and Child Abuse Prevention Month, but every day. And asking towns to set up the blue flags for the month is one way to remind these youth we see them, we hear them, and we support them during a time of their lives that is just relatively carefree, not the reality they know, trauma, loss, and loneliness. Um, and last but not least, we don't have any of our advocates here tonight, but we do have folks from New Providence, so we just want to recognize them as well. Thank you. Okay, we're going to go a little out of order because, um, well, first let's do the uh, community pool and recreation court for presentation. Tom, Dan? Hi, guys. Welcome. So I'm Tom, this is Dan, we're from the Compliance Committee Pool. Um, so first, we just want to start off and thank the Mayor and Council, Bernadette, uh, and Austin Smith for, the, from, for all your support uh, over the years. You guys are great. So anytime we have a problem or question or curveball, you got the right to us. So we appreciate that very much. Um, I always like to give a shout out to my management team, Steve Hughes, Steve Cronin, Aaron Valletta, Jackie Bovary, Jen Hughes now, and Jen Platt. Uh, so we're excited about this season. We're always excited. It's like the it's like right before like opening day of baseball, like opening day of the pool. It's like an exciting month for us. We're planning everything, we're getting everything going. Um, so we're really excited that uh, to open the pool and get back to the way we're normal. Uh, most importantly, this is our 60th year anniversary, which is pretty incredible when you think about it. I know the province is an old town, uh, but I've only been here like 11 or 12 years, so 60 years to me is a lot. Um, so we're excited. So we're having a huge party, um, which you guys will. Find out about soon, but it's uh, on June 10th. We, uh, we're gonna have like a DJ, a dunk tank, a raffle, a free ice cream. We've asked the police department, the fire department, EMS to all show up and we'll do some stuff for the kids, all kinds of fun stuff. So we'll make it into a big day. Um, uh, we just uh, opened up our membership, so uh, you can certainly sign up for the pool anytime. Our swim team. So we're excited about that. But everything's open this year. We have the old two Olympic sized pools open, snacks, playground, board, everything is open. We're going. We also just finished our event planning. So we have teen night, senior day, family fun day, movie night, draft night, yoga, Zambini, whatever that is. And You'll find out soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it's some water and exercise class. But yeah, so we're doing all kinds of fun stuff. And we're excited about it. And yeah, we, we just can't wait to open the pool. I mean, that's like the most exciting day of the year for us. I don't know if you guys have any questions or. No, how many um, how many people do you have from out of town? Because I know you were uh, yeah, membership so we have about was a dropped seventy thirty through. mix. Yeah, we yeah. have seventy thirty mix. Okay. Okay. Right. Versus, and it uh, works out so fine. Non residents, yeah. Okay. So we we try to keep it balanced so that it's primarily the province. And yeah. It is the community pool as well. Our DNA. So right. Have you guys been in the bylaws? Yeah. I think last time you guys were here, um, we talked about rebranding and maybe getting some marketing. Yeah, so we we talked about that at nauseam. We talked about that, and we just keep coming back to. Uh, I hate to give Doctor Bob a shout out, but Doctor Bob always said when you when you're making decisions in town, say the problems first, the problems first, the problems first, and then think about what the problem is, and then kind of come up with a solution. So we kind of came back to our name and our mission statement, and it's the New Providence Community Pool. We thought about changing it. We tried to change it. We couldn't come up with anything better than the New Providence Community Pool because it is the community pool and kind of that's that's kind of central to, to who we are and what we're all about. So um, we, 
we tried really hard to come up with something better, but we couldn't. So. Um, if you change your name, there's a lot that goes into that yeah. too. Yeah, you change your corporation name, and yeah. So yeah, so we're we're sticking with it. We think we uh, we think we have a great name, and it's kind of who we are and what we're all about. So we're going to stick with it. We started a marketing campaign. We probably got postcards in the mail. If you haven't already, you should be getting this week. Uh, but yeah, we're excited. We're more excited this year than ever. I mean, we're back. So. Well, you just reminded me of one thing. Sign up. <laughs> <laughs> Is uh, Rosemary Hughes? Yes. Who was? She was with the pool for the very beginning, I believe, but she just yep. passed away. Yep, so I'm going to ask everybody to stand up and give a moment of silence for her. Thank you so much. And I know Rosemary, Perdebasia, uh, Claire Stang, they were all at the library and gave the history of mm -hmm. how the pool started. And yep, yep, absolutely. We're going to honor her at the party. Well. Oh, good, good. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Bert and Claire are still alive, and they, they gave out an a lot of information I didn't know because I think I was like eight years old when it was open, so. Okay. So when is when can people <coughs> sign up and how can they sign up and uh, do you, you have any website. specials yeah, or? You go to our website. Uh, the early bird special started, so uh, if you want to sign up, you're every membership sign up. Yep. Yeah. And that goes through when? The early that goes bird? through April tenth. Yeah, I think yeah. April tenth is when the early bird is through. Yeah. 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 I, I, I know. <laughs> and I, I usually find out on April 9th because I get a lot of text messages. Yeah. Pacific time or Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we're excited, yeah. So uh, we're, we're expecting uh, a big turnout this year. Yeah, so I, mean, I was going to say, after COVID, right, there was just a lull and people were afraid. And, mm -hmm. But I think that's hopefully all behind us. And everybody can get out and enjoy this beautiful facility that we have right here in town. We're very lucky. Yeah, we're, we're there. We're uh, Also, I should probably mention Memorial Day, we're having uh, like an open house or something, too. We have yet to figure out all the details. But it'll be an open house to the province residents. Good idea. And uh, I'll send you guys a copy of our event schedule once we uh, finalize this one. Great. Hey, thank you for what you do, both of you gentlemen. Uh, yeah. The pool is such a big part of our town, and I know you work hard to keep innovative things and keep it relevant. So, um, again, thank you. It's not work. It's fun for us. So. Yeah. It's how do we serve the community and, and the, the members of the, the pool? So it's, it's great. Awesome. Great. Well, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. And I'll see you in the dump tank. <laughs> I think he just signed up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've done that many years. Um, you know, I'm going to go out of order a little because I see the diversity uh, committees here and they have students here. Do you want to make a presentation? Yeah. Sunil, come on up. Go ahead. <laughs> We're easy here. Thank you. Uh, good evening. My name is Constantine Munoz, and I am joined here with Uwe Janssen, Rafa Niazi, and Absharma. Today, we would like to propose this year's Unity Fair, the Colors of Humanity event, previously named Race Unity Day. The aim of this event is to celebrate all cultures and educate attendees in an engaging way. We are currently working with other NPHS students and UCBTS students, as well as the New Providence Diversity Committee to plan the fifth annual Unity Fair. Our proposed date for the event is June 3rd, 2023, with a rain date of June 4th, from 5 to 7 p.m. with approximately an additional hour, both before and after for setup and cleanup. Hello, so this year our goal is to provide a fun and exciting experience for all members of all ages, 
So what we're going to do is the event will once more consist of festive booths that have a lot of interactive components. So some examples would be booths from the NPHS language clubs. We also, for example, have a New Providence Middle School student running a Pakistani booth. And we also have a Nepali booth. And those are just some of the ones that we will have. And additionally, there will be cultural performances, so songs, dances, and some guest speakers who will share speeches and poems about their identity. And guest speakers may also include members of the Borough and Diversity Committee if they wish to speak. As for the resources, we request from the Borough that we would like to use Centennial Park as the venue with Academy Street being closed off. And we will also need about 20 tables, printer access, a police officer on duty, and then audio set up for the performances and speakers as well as personnel to assist us with that. And also we would like to have access to the bathrooms in the rec center and just a room for us to store supplies and equipment. So something new for this year, we hope to introduce food trucks or food vendors into this year's event. And we are looking into feasible health department permitted vendors. So um, those with already permits and have been in previous events. While this is a new component this year, we believe that food is one of the best ways to bring people together. And another component, uh, component that we would like to focus is the promotion of the event. We would like to use the Facebook and Instagram pages of Diversity Committee, New Providence Borough, Recreation, etc. We would also like to put flyers in local places like the New Providence School District schools and the library and use other electronic forms of communication like the tap into articles and New Providence What's Happening newsletter. Well, I can tell you right now that we can't speak for the schools or the library. The library has their own board, but you can, you can uh, go to them directly, okay? Thank you. To end this event, we would like to wind up with a celebration of the festival, Holi. Holi is the Indian festival of colors, which represents unity and love amongst our community. This event would likely take place in front of Centennial Park at Academy Street. And for this celebration, we'd like to request holy packets for our anticipated attendees. We would also like to request washing stations to contain water to rinse from our recipients. The presence of around four to five of these stations would be more than enough. The holy celebration will end the Colors of Humanity event as colorfully and as vividly as we imagined it. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I sure do. Uh, well, first of all, thank you guys so much for all the work that you've done. Um, not only this year, how, how long have you guys each been working on this event? This is our third year. That's your yeah. third year? That's our third. And second? This is the second. Okay, so we have collectively a lot of time that has been invested in our committee and invested in our borough bringing this outstanding event to our residents. Um, so I want to thank you for that first. Um, in terms of, um, yeah, we have everything written up that you just talked about. Uh, in terms of uh, publicity, also we want to um, send it out through the SMART 911 distribution as well. Um, residents sign up to get community events, so they would get an email. I believe we would aim the day, or after maybe the week before the event, uh, to send out the SMART 911. So we want to include that as well. Um, and then, I guess we could just talk about Holy. Um, so. The, the only thing that we are concerned is we just want to make sure that it's put in the right place. Um, and up until Sunday, I've never been to a holy before. Alex has never been to a holy before. And we just went to our first holy um, um, Sunday over at the Wachang Reservation. So based on that and what we've observed, we feel that we can contain it and keep it safe on Academy Street, but up by the steps. So we don't want to have anything right outside of Centennial Park because we figure that's where the food trucks are going to be. Um, and then also, you know, we have our memorial in Centennial Park. We want to keep everything away from that park area. So we're considering having it on the street outside of the steps from, um, from the building. And it could be there up on Academy Street there. It does not take a lot of space. It does not really leave any much residue behind, just a little bit of residue behind. Because it's more so um, you're distributing the colors. You're giving colors to each other, wishing each other a happy holy. There's music, there's dancing. Um, we had, I, I had, he didn't dance, I danced. Um, I had a great time, it was a lot of fun. Um, and I really gained a great appreciation for, for the celebration. And I would definitely love to include that as part of 
um, the day, the Unity Day, because I think that will definitely end it on a very happy ending note, especially end um, for you seniors. You know, you can go out with a very colorful ending. So that's that's my take on it. Yeah, the okay. only thing I would also add, I, I appreciate the, the name change as well or the rebranding that you guys did. I think in our committee meetings, we talked the race you need today. A lot of us, at least myself, thought this was a 5K race in New Providence, but now calling it Unity Day, Unity Day and having the international flavor to it for sure is, is definitely going to attract a lot more people. But as Nadine said, I really applaud your effort. You guys are terrific. Um, when you first presented to us a few weeks ago, we tried to tell you this was going to be easy. And uh, you guys did a wonderful job. So I, I really commend you for all your effort. How would be washing stations going to work? Well, that's um, what we did in uh, the Wajung Reservation. They just had wipes. So I think we can actually even get by with like wipes. I don't think yeah. we need any kind of station. Um, you can I, get like, I think that's we, were, what we, we had. were literally able to brush it off. And I didn't and even, yeah, we didn't really. I didn't even use the wipes. Yeah. And I got back what and did a nice chalk? car after. Chalk. It's, 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 like it's a powder. It's, powder. Yeah. It's, like a powder. it's a powder more so than a chalk because you think of a chalk, you think of it being abrasive. I'm going to show pictures. You so think when of it, it being rains, abrasive. it's going to wash away. Yeah. Yes. yes. Uh, it washes away very we, easily. We didn't even see any residue on the, on the floor or the grass no. and everything mm -hmm. like that. Yes, it dissolves real quick. It dissolves very quickly and it would be gone by the next rain. Any, any other comments? I would say, you know, I'm, I'm very impressed with your presentation. You guys did a really great job. And, and uh, you know, to your point, you said, you know, you guys have been doing this for a long time. And it really, you know, what's really special about New Providence is, uh, you know, you do something once and people enjoy it and you do it again and it gets better and better, right? So uh, this event just keeps getting better. So well done by you guys and the committee. Thank you. So, yes, sir. Can I just add a couple of words, Mayor Council? Thank you so much. I think the collaboration, particularly Councilwoman Joffrey, Councilman Kogan, but also administration, Wendy, Bernadette, and Allison, who's not here. So we, we've had some interesting discussions. But I was so pleased to, to hear Bernadette say at the last meeting that our preparation was much improved. So <laughs> <laughs> we as a, we've gotten better at presenting in a way that you can digest this information with. So really, I think that's what stands out in our town, that we collaborate, we learn, and we have an outstanding group who's really, you know, our future leaders planning it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you Sunil. Can Thank we you. get a picture with you, Mayor, uh, with the, the young folks we're talking to? For Kathleen Dolan for a municipal alliance, I have a motion, please. So moved. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. No, so be it. Approval minutes of uh, March 14th, conference meeting. Motion, please. So moved. Second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Aye. No, so be it. Uh, March 14th, regular meeting. Motion, please. So moved. Second. I'll second. I'll second. I'll All in favor? Aye. 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 No, so be it. We have correspondence for uh, New Providence Fire Department junior membership of uh, Nicholas Arcadia. We welcome him. Um, uh, Terraphase Engineering, uh, Berkeley Development Corp for uh, 1731 High Street, and remediation has been completed. Uh, 
Uni County Improvement Authority, their annual meeting, uh, Uni County uh, Special Meeting on Fiscal Affairs, and um, Township of Chatham uh, Land Development Ordinance. Uh, any comments? Seeing none, we'll go to Council Business and we'll go to Administration Lisa. Thank you, Mayor. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, we'll start with the introduction of Ordinance 2023-02. This ordinance is an amending Chapter 147 of the Code of the Borough of New Providence entitled Fees and Licenses. Uh, this ordinance changes the fee paid for the use of police vehicles only, um, so not the police officer, just the police vehicle, from $100 per day to $150 per day for vendor, vendor escrow jobs. Uh, item 12, letter F, number 3. All other fees remain the same. The change in the fee accounts for the increase in gas prices and wear and tear on the vehicles. So again, this is for the vehicles only. It's when you see, you know, um, the gas company or the electric company on the side of the road and they need to use a police officer, that type of thing. Uh, resolution 2023-096 is a resolution authorizing contract for municipal management software from Property Pilot LLC. This resolution authorizing the borough to enter into a 12-month contract with Property Pilot to provide municipal management software and the amount not to exceed $36,364. Okay, we already did diversity yep. committee. Yep. We've all said that. <laughs> okay, committee activities, Pete. Thank you, Mayor. Resolution 2023-98 is a resolution amending the contract for bus transportation services for community activities and senior programs awarded to Broadway, Elite Tours, doing the DBA uh, uh, Passaic Valley coach. Uh, this resolution is amending the original contract with Passaic Valley uh, to account for an unexpected increase in gas and, and parts prices. Uh, Passaic Valley has been providing bus services for the borough for more than 10 years. Uh, all costs for the buses are incorporated into the fees paid during registration. Um, and it's my understanding that this has been reviewed in accordance with our purchasing guidelines. I believe Jim Test, our CFO, has been uh, important in leading this effort. Jim, can you elaborate on this for us? Sure. Uh, the original uh, resolution was for three years. That was based on a request for uh, quotations, which is different than a formal bid. Um, and it was broken out for three years. In the third year, as we were said, that the vendor came back and said they could not do the services for what they told it three years ago based on all the mm -hmm. circumstances. So what we did was, since it was a quotation, and for year three it was under the bid threshold, we asked the vendors to submit another quotation for their services for this year. When we see that, we compared it to the second lowest bidder back in 2020, and this one was still lower than the second lowest bidder. So therefore, uh, we can move, move in uh, through resolution to award it under the new terms of the contract, which will give us the services in the summer. As you know, right now, it's very hard to get buses. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we lost this vendor, I'm not sure what we do for the summer program. So worked out and it does follow the purchasing laws that are currently set. So. And they've been very reliable over the years. So They've been very good and yeah. we feel safe with them. This yeah. is mainly really for the teen venture camp. So this is, you know, we're putting our kids on their buses. So we yeah. feel very safe and comfortable with this company and um, it makes sense to do it as such. Thank you, Jim. That's it, Mayor. Okay, uh, engineering. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Thank you, Mayor. Resolution 2023-099, resolution authorizing return of escrow funds to PBK 44N PLLC. Uh, this is to return escrow funds in the amount of $6,346.25 associated with the application variance that was rescinded after the codification of the zoning and land use ordinance were adopted. Uh, resolution 2023-100, uh, resolution authorizing the agreement between the Borough of New Providence and the Borough of Madison for construction inspection services. Um, I believe this was a handshake agreement and we're basically now memorializing uh, 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 this agreement for inspection uh, services, of course, uh, subject to scheduling and availability of our staff and their staff. This uh, agreement will be in place from April 
1st of 2023 through March 31st of 2024. Um, resolution 2023-101, resolution of approving purchase order 23-00597 for 705 Central Avenue condominium in amount not to exceed $21,450 for repaving at 705 uh, Central Avenue. Uh, this is to approve the payment uh, for the parking lot uh, repavement. The borough owns the front portion of the building where the Summit Speech School is located. Um, the $21,400 allotment here is for half of the amount of the project. Um, and then we have an ordinance to introduce ordinance 2023-03. Uh, an ordinance by the mayor and council of the borough of New Providence amending the borough of New Providence code of ordinances to repeal chapter 28, uh, sorry, chapter 281 flood damage prevention section of 281-1 through 281-19 uh, to adopt the new chapter 281 flood plain management section 281-1 through 281-17 to adopt flood hazard maps to designate a flood plan plain administrator and providing a uh, severability and effective date. Um, Bernadette, you can help me, but this is really just uh, a requirement by the state uh, that's going to adopt our, um, uh, our, our, our uh, construction officer sitting in the back, <laughs> Keith Lidge, as our uh, floodplain uh, management person. Okay, finance, Lisa. All right, thank you, Mayor. So we're going to do our budget presentation tonight. So while you're getting that ready, I'll just um, you know, give a little shout out to, uh, we have Jim Testa sitting here. here. He's our, he's our uh, CFO. Um, so I want to thank Jim. I know it's a lot of work. Uh, Bernadette, Wendy, all the department heads. Uh, these are the people that really uh, are the reason why our borough is in such good shape. Um, especially a year like this that we've had, you know, and I feel like we've say that a lot unfortunately <laughs> we have these challenging economic uh years but this year has been tough um we've had some micro and macro economic issues of course everybody's been uh, impacted by rising inflation rising interest rates the unsteady markets all of this stuff has put a lot of pressure um on the budget and our municipal team uh really put in many hours they took a real deep dive analyzing every line item by item to get the budget as lean as possible without sacrificing services that we're accustomed to um, and making sure that the boroughs is maintains its you know utmost financial health and we'll go over our, our goals later but you know the one certainty is that we don't want to risk our AAA bond rating um, so they did all of this right making sure we had a nice little budget looking at everything line by line while maintaining services and maintaining our the ratios and uh, stats that we need for our rating. Another uh, thing this year is that last year you requested that we leave some time right between the introduction of the budget and the adoption so that you would have time to review it, digest it, come up with some questions. So we heard you. So this year we're doing it a little bit differently. Tonight, Councilwoman Diane Velisca and I will be introducing the budget. Um, and then at the April 25th meeting, we will be adopting it. And at that point, you can ask questions. So you will have pretty much an entire month to take a look at it. It will be posted on, on the website. You can review it and um, come back with, with questions. So with that, we will jump right in with annual budget process. So like I said, uh, this is the operating budget, which includes personnel costs, and that's uh, everything from our administrative team, our recreation department. Um, we have annual facility operating costs, and this is everything from, you know, turning on the lights and heating the buildings, debt service, and the operating budget is funded primarily through local property and sales taxes licenses uh, this category includes you know your building department fees um, dog licenses the alcohol licenses hotel fees uh, charges for services and other similar sources of revenue 
Then there's the capital budget, which is slightly different. The capital budget funds major improvements to the borough and its infrastructure. So these are longer term, um, longer term endeavors, right? So they're not, you know, on the budget and off the budget. They're things that are uh, have a longer capital life. Um, and so these, so this is things like paving roads, building uh, some major building projects. It includes resources that have an expected lifetime that extends beyond the acquisition year. Um, the capital budget is supported by debt, grants. Those grants come from the Fed, from the state, possibly even some private, but probably not so much, uh, and cash. With that, um, you know, with those, with that debt, we look at the multi-year capital plan. And that's developed so that we can strategically structure and ladder the capital debt and manage that debt through the operating budget. So it all kind of cycles back. So whatever debt we take out for the capital plan projects cycles back into the operating budget because it has to get paid for. The annual budget process occurs between the months of November and April and involves input from all the department heads, like I said, the borough administrator and the CFO. Once the draft is developed, it is reviewed and adjusted based on meetings with the borough's finance committee. Um, I want to just add that although the budget process is November to April, technically it's a year-round endeavor. You know, expenditures and revenue items are reviewed year-round as they evolve and change and, you know, if adjustments need to be made. Um, so I was, as I was saying before, there are uh, there must be at least 28 days between the budget introduction, which is tonight, and the public meeting where the budget can be formally adopted. That public hearing and adoption will be held on April 25th. Once the public hearing is closed, the governing body can either adopt the introduced budget or amend the budget. Depending on the amendment, the budget may not be able to be adopted on the same night there may need to be further advertisement and an additional public hearing. The introduced budget will be available on the borough website for citizen review in the next day or so. <clears throat> so what are our goals for the budget? Um, to demonstrate fiscal responsibility and sound fiscal planning and management, continue practices that support our AAA bond rating, which Lisa mentioned, and spoiler alert, that will be our next slide. Um, in short, that's a huge deal. Um, assure adequate funding levels to reserve accounts for tax appeals, storm recovery, and insurance. This is another big deal. Um, similar to any household's rainy day accounts, um, we need to have reserves. We have three major items that we have those reserves, like we just said, tax appeals, storm recovery, and insurance. If we have a huge snowstorm one year, we need to have a reserve. Um, we consider the burden on all of our taxpayers. We want to maximize operational efficiencies, review and analyze staffing needs, like at least on a budgetary basis. Seek share, seek grants whenever possible to fund operations and capital improvements and above all, be mindful of the tax impact on taxpayers. We want to have affordable increases, steady increases, so there's no surprise shocks, um, while, again, having the highest level of service and uh, what our uh, residents expect. And the above all, or not above all, but another consideration is the impact of our current decisions on future bu budgets. We definitely want to make sure that whatever we're doing this year, we're looking at the past, we're looking at the present, and we're looking at the future. So our AAA bond rating, which is our guiding principle. So New Providence has received the AAA bond rating from all three major rating agencies, which are Moody's, Standard & Poor's, and Fitch's. Um, there are only a very few select municipalities in New Jersey with a AAA bond rating from two agencies, and there are even fewer that have AAA bond ratings from three rating agencies, which we are one of the few. Um, so what does this mean? 
it, like I said, it's a very huge deal um, to have this AAA rating. It is the highest rating that can be assigned. Um, it is the stro it demonstrates it shows that we demonstrate very very strong credentials related to in relation to other municipalities. Um, we can meet our financial commitments, and we have a very low level or a low chance of default. Um, and why is this important? Like Lisa mentioned in the first, uh, not the first slide, but in the beginning, we do go out and we have uh, debt to, um, re we, we go out for bonds to uh, fund our long-term capital projects. So the chart that's here, it just gives you a really quick um, discussion or a really quick, easy uh, appearance of AAA versus AA, right? $25 million over 20 years, you have a 3% interest rate on a AAA rated uh, bond uh, with a AAA rating, a 3.5% with a AA rating. So obviously there's a difference. And over the life of that debt, it's $7.82 million versus $9.12 million, which is a savings of our, for our taxpayers of about $1.3 million over the life of the bond, which is a huge deal. So the owners of real property in New Providence pay real estate taxes based upon the assessed valuation of their property. The municipal governments collect the property tax for the benefit of three different taxing entities, the municipality, the local schools, and Union County. Um, the mayor and the council control only the municipality portion of this, um, of this tax. So the municipality, the municipal tax is the one that directly affects the borough. Uh, the school tax is determined by the Board of Education and we, the mayor and council and the borough, we have no control over that portion. And same with Union County. Um, that is the, the county budget is established by the county commissioners. Again, we have no control over that portion of the budget or of, of that tax rather. Um, the proposed budget is under the state cap requirements for appropriations and tax levy. We are maintaining all current programs and staffing levels. The state aid that we received this year, um, although it says it increased, <laughs> it increased by $9,000, which I would consider basically flat with last year. The proposed budget this year is at $25,992,635. And this equates to an increase in the municipal tax rate of 1.73% or $73 per um, household. And that's on the average assessed home in New Providence. So that comes out to about $6.08 <laughs> a month. Um, nobody wants to pay higher taxes ever, right? Um, but if you think about it in terms of what we've seen this year, just think of how much more money you're paying for everything at home, right? How much more you're paying in the supermarket, at the gas pumps, um, everything, your insurance, you know, everything is, is going up. And the fact that the municipal, that we, the borough, have been able to hold this rate to at 1.73% um, is, is phenomenal. So some of the highlights, we continue to deliver high levels of services to all residents. Um, the budget includes increases in staff as follows. We have an administrative assistant that is moving from part-time to full-time. And we have the addition of a full-time borough engineer in the budget as well. So some of the biggest drivers of the 2023 budget, insurance costs, uh, we've set, seen a 21% increase to our group medical, also a, a nice healthy bump to our liability insurance, uh, negotiated con contractual costs, solid waste and recycling costs up nearly 7%, like I was saying before, <coughs> utility costs increases, uh, and also pension costs probably up about 12% this year. So the pension costs are supplied by the state and are statutory payments, so not any control over those. So all these areas are putting some extra pressure on our budget this year. 
I'm always going second or last, and I always feel like I'm saying, and ditto to what she said, oh, no. <laughs> just in general. <laughs> um, your thunder? I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I'm just going to reiterate a lot of the things that you said. So we have, I get the, the pretty colorful slide. Um, so this is basically our proposed budget appropriations. Um, the breakdown is actually very, very similar to our, our expenses from prior years, or our budget from prior years. Um, and these are expenses that are necessary to run the town and cannot and should not be changed. Elisa just mentioned in her highlights that inflation has hit many of our expense lines. Um, and this is, I wrote this down, so I'm gonna say it. Even so, the borough does a very good job reviewing and managing our everyday operations. So kudos to our borough um, staff and everyone in it. So if you look at the right side of the pie, you've got public safety, pension, health insurance, employee benefits, and debt service. And those three pieces are about 45%, which is a big chunk of our um, of our expenses. Public safety, um, fire, EMS, police. This is one of our guiding tenants, keeping our residents and visitors safe. So those expenses are for everything to keep our residents safe. Um, again, it's one of the things that we do invest very well in. Public safety, uh, I just said public safety. Pensions, Lisa just mentioned, this is mostly a statutory and regulated cost. Uh, we have very little control. Infrastructure, I, um, our debt service is basically going towards our infrastructure. Uh, public works, garbage, sewer treatment, that's approximately 18%. That's all things to um, basically keep our borough running. Um, library is basically, it's a 4%, which is another, it's a, it's a smaller one, but that's an in and out. Um, and the rest is just what we do to keep our borough running. Streetlights and utilities, community activities, which we've talked about, uh, the uh, rec department. Um, and uh, that's about it. I, again, we manage our dollars very well. We look at a lot of things. Kudos again to our borough employees. Okay. This is the proposed budget revenues, and again, very similar percentages to the prior year. Our municipal taxes are 60%. It's the biggest piece of the pie. Other revenues are, um, like Lisa already said, is uh, hotel fees, parking, shared services. She did forget licenses for cats, which apparently is a big thing, and we had a lot of licenses for cats this year. Um, Fund balance is 16%, and that's very similar to the prior year. Grants fluctuates, but our amazing borough team is constantly looking for great relation, uh, looking for grants. We have a great relationship with Union County, and that helps us to realize grants on the county level. Um, state aid had a nominal increase, less than 1% from the prior year. And there's your library taxes, which is your in versus your out on the prior slide. This is another illustrative slide. It's basically an estimated 2023 breakdown of total tax bills of a market value average house of $700,000. Um, so basically what this is saying is for every dollar of taxes, the borough controls about 20 cents, a little more than 20 cents. Union County is a little more than 21 cents and a little more than 20, uh, 56 cents is our Board of Education budget. Um, that's where your money goes. Uh, some of these things like open spaces, library tax, um, those are given to us based on our population. If you compare our tax percentages to neighboring towns, you'll see that they're very similar. So yeah, let's compare to our peer communities. Um, if you look at that first column, the average tax number, that you know is a little deceiving because you're not comparing apples to apples there. So it, I, in that column, we look a little high, but the reason is because we are one of the only municipalities in the area that includes garbage and sewer in your tax. Um, Towns like Cranford, Scotch Plains, 
um, you're paying separately for garbage and you're paying separately for sewer. So once you add those in, you get a truer picture of where we fall and that is in the top, in the top three. Um, so I think this is a good chart that just, you know, show you up so you can compare apples to apples of where our borough falls. So as I was saying before, the capital budget funds major improvements to borough facilities and infrastructure. Again, these are areas that have a longer expected life. Uh, this allows projects to be amortized across their useful life rather than burdening the taxpayer in one year. So instead of going out and, you know, you know, paying for, you know, funding a, a, an expensive project and putting it on the books and, and amortizing it over a short period of time, having a longer amortization enables us to, um, to budget that and also to have a nice sort of a steady cash flow. This also allows residents utilizing the project in future years to pay their share of the cost. So, you know, people move into town, people move out of town, having that longer amortization, everybody participates in paying for that project. Uh, it supports capital projects through multiple funding sources. And like we said before, that will be bonds, grants, cash, and strategically layering that debt so that payments amortize consistently over time. Uh, it allows aging infrastructure to be maintained through continually investing in capital projects. Um, but one thing about the budget, the capital budget, is that it's tied to a capital plan. We always go out and look, you know, at least five years out to see what projects might be coming up, and that's how we plan for them. Um, so we do have a long-term plan. We, have a, we keep a long-term view and focus so that we know what's coming down the road um, and, and to ensure that we have the dollars available for those projects. So the Borough Council is committed to remain fiscally responsible and pursue projects based on needs of the community rather than the wants. The 2023 proposed budget does include approximately $3 million for a capital improvement plan. The projects are reviewed on a case-by-case -case basis before making any decisions to move forward in funding and completing the projects. So some of the things that we would consider, you know, before moving ahead is, you know, is this the right environment? Uh, is it the right course of action? Does the project resolve safety issues or concerns? Does delaying the project have any type of negative impact on the borough operations? So those are you know, things that we would consider before entering into a uh, capital project. Another thing to, to note is that projects that are currently underway are from prior year appropriations. And I think that wraps up the operating budget. So what will, like I said, what will happen is it will get posted on the borough website. And then on April 25th, we will take questions comments and then um, I guess it probably I think it's also important if anybody has any questions and can't make the council meeting and wants to know the answers ahead of time you can always uh, contact us through the website and we would be happy to answer any questions okay uh, thank you oh, Lisa yes. and Diane so, um, I think I have some more. You have some more business. Have some, I do have some more talking to do. Okay. Uh, so we've got the introdu introduction of Ordinance 2023-04. This is calendar 2023 ordinance to exceed the municipal budget appropriation limits and to establish a cap bank. So that is NJSA 40A 40-45.14. The introduction of Ordinance 2023-03 allows for the 2023 municipal budget to exceed 1% of the 2022 budget and establishes a cap bank for funds not appropriated as part of the final budget up to 3.5%. Uh, resolution 2023-102 is a resolution approving the introduction of 2023 municipal operating budget and establishing the hearing date. 
the introduction of the municipal operating budget. Um, this was, they just did that for 2023. A hearing of the budget and tax resolution will be held at the municipal building on April 25th, 2023 at 7.30 p.m., at which time and place discussions regarding budget and tax resolution for the year 2023 may be represented by taxpayers and other interested parties. Lisa, can I just stop you there and just, I just want to make note that that is a change in, in meeting date. So um, the original oh. scheduled date was the week before, but due yes. to the length in between, we, we needed to change the meeting. That's right. Like we said, we need 28 days from introduction to adoption. So we had to push it, push it out one week. Uh, resolution 2023-103 is a resolution approving the introduction and establish downtown improvement district SID 2023 budget hearing date. Uh, and this is the introduction for the downtown improvement district budget. And then resolution 2023-104 is a resolution authorizing payment of the attached bills payable list in the amount of $903,927.58. Some of the significant items are for the state of New Jersey, 139707 that is the March State Health Benefits Premium. The Garden State GIF is our second insurance installment for $145,843. And then we have Ben Schaefer Recreation, um, and that is for the gazebo at Veterans Park, paid with grant um, and capital funds. So our portion, $120,666. One more. <laughs> Sorry. Um, almost done. Resolution 2023-105 is the resolution authorizing emergency temporary appropriations. Okay. That's it. You're welcome. <laughs> we go right now. Thank you. Resolution 2023-106 is a resolution of the Borough of New Providence authorizing the Borough to participate in nationwide settlement agreements with Allergan, Teva, CVS, Walgreens, and Walmart to resolve claims involving their roles in the country's opioid crisis. Basically, this resolution is just approving the application for the borough to participate in this nationwide settlement. Um, and if you note, we have had some settlements before or uh, been involved with some of these um, settlements before, and those were for the manufacturer of opioids. These are all for the distributors of opioids. In fact, I got an email from uh, Mike Sarah from the uh, League of Municipalities imploring us to get to, uh, to uh, participate. Okay, uh, personnel, Matt. Yes, resolution 2023-107 is a resolution accepting written retirement resignation from Donna Sarna as administrative assistant for the Borough of New Providence Police Department. And we will also be requesting to advertise for administrative assistant uh, for that position in our police department. And we wish Donna well and thank her for her service for the many years she's been here. Okay, public safety, we have uh, uh, limousine, limousine taxi licenses, um, Shawhead Akram, Summit Express, and Khalid Ibrahim, the province calling limo. The uh, licenses were properly filled out and, and uh, okay. Okay, um, we have resolution 108 approving purchase order for Eastern surplus and equipment for uh, $16,000. Uh, as you know, the, we had a, uh, we had the five ton truck. What we found out in the last storm with Ida is that we had to pick up people, but we needed back steps to get up into the truck to get people out. So this is to uh, put back steps in. Okay, public works out. Thank you, Mayor. Resolution 2023-109, a resolution accepting the proposal of Collier Engineering and Design uh, for professional serving services regarding Department of Public Works Yard, Block 76, Lot 3501. 
Um, this is approving the proposal from Colliers to provide surveying services for the borough in order to set the boundary line between DPW and the county green acres parkland. Once the survey is done, we'll uh, be able to move the fence to its proper location. Okay, uh, sustainability, Diane. Thank you. Resolution 2023-110 is a resolution approving the request of the New Providence Sustainability Committee to participate in a mini freight cycle and green fair event on April 15th, 2023. Basically, this resolution um, approves of our participation, our Sustainability Advisory Committee to participate in Link's mini free cycle event at the United Methodist Church on April 15th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, and it's kind of a testament to our Sustainability Committee and the work that we have done. Um, now we're having the community starting to engage in smaller um, events, more frequent smaller events, and we're just there to help. Okay, great. Okay, we have uh, council committee reports. Uh, first, I'd like to say um, thank you to Bernadette and uh, Allison. We have a new gazebo in Veterans Park and a brand new clock, which was sorely needed. And I saw Ralph out there today working on the other clock, one side of the, the hands on one side weren't working properly. Um, I did want to bring up a couple of things. It's not really borough business, but they have the Easter egg hunt on April 1st at 9.30 at Oakwood Park. And the fire department, police department, and EMS always show up to show off their wares to the community and the kids. And we want to thank the Lions Club for, I think this is over 60 years they've been doing this. There's 2,500 eggs that they die. And it starts at 9.30 and it's over at 9.35. <laughs> That's a joke. There we go. <laughs> Also, I was honored to talk to third graders at AAWR, Mrs. Kowalski's class. They uh, putting civics back into the classroom. And I have to tell you, I was very impressed that they had some very, very good questions about local government. Uh, and they even invited me to do Read Across America at the Presbyterian Church Preschool. And uh, those kids, um, they had a lot of questions too. Four classes. In fact, they have more comments than questions. I think I know where every single one of them is going for Easter. <laughs> so, but uh, besides that, operations normal. Okay, who's uh, next, Diane? Um, I have a couple things. We heard about sustainability committee mini um, mini free cycle. Um, there are also the green awards. Don't forget about those. Anybody can vote for an individual or a business, and also mark your calendars for the green fair on April twenty second. Historical Society, um, go to the website for full information, but they continue to engage the community and be a visible presence with all generations. The ECLC of Chatham recently received a tour of the Salt Box Museum, as did a prior resident of the house when it was a home across the street. Wilna Gredgon Keats, who is 93 years old, toured it. Um, the Salt Box Museum will be open this coming Sunday on April 2nd, 1 to 3. Mason Room in the NP Library is usually open to the public on Tuesdays. That's in the back of the library. The Salt Box Museum, oh, I said that. The annual dinner is coming up, so buy your tickets for that. And the May 6th annual craft fair is coming up. Downtown Improvement District, we had our annual meeting held last week. Um, one project that the DID is working on is a potential, and it's in the beginning, <clears throat> beginning phases, potential for a bike rack or racks on the piece of land on Springfield Avenue in front of the Starbucks, Starbucks slash Chipotle. So that's very exciting. Um, another topic uh, was green energy, um, like charging stations. So the businesses are starting to talk about that too. Another very exciting thing. Um, again, in the very beginning stages. Um, and the DID is, actually, is a proud sponsor of many of our NP activities, like summer concert series, national night out, and the holiday walk. 
So, good things happening. I almost forgot a big thing now. What? I have to congratulate Lisa because she got the one, one of the recipients of the Good Scout Award. Award. Yeah. So, okay. congratulations. <laughs> Um, I would also like to thank our police, EMS, and fire department for all of the senior in high in our NPHS for running around the town. So if you saw kids, crazy kids running around, that was what happened this week. And uh, one of the things that we said was, please take a picture with, you know, uh, or thank thank one of our first responders. Everybody was so good to them. Like, and the kids were really excited about it, and the first responders were just amazing with it. So, They're thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, Pete. Yeah, just two quick announcements for community activities. One, uh, spring break is April 10th through 14th, and the New Providence Recreation is offering camps for kids grades K through uh, 6. There's still space available, which sounds like a good opportunity to register on Community Pass System. Uh, the other big announcement is registration for the annual PBA Fishing Derby opens next Monday, April 3rd. Via Community Pass, the Fishing Derby will be held at Oakwood Park on Saturday, May 6th at 8 a.m. That's it. Thank you. Hope it's warm. <laughs> Matt. Fishing Derby is my favorite. I love it. <clears throat> I met my, uh, it's quick. I met my, one of my neighbors after we moved in. My, my daughter was probably three. Uh, I went down to Oakwood Park after the Fishing Derby and you know, I brought a little pole with her, no hook, no nothing, put it in the water, made it look like she was fishing. One of my neighbors came down, he throws his reel into the into the pond, jerks it, grabs a fish, hands it to my daughter, she reeled in the fish. She was the happiest nice. person in the world, took him two seconds, threw it back out, reeled in another one, handed it to my son. It was uh, just truly amazing. Uh, it's one of my favorites, I love it. So, two quick things, cricket pitch, uh, the, the turf was ordered. Um, I know we got a rendering on the, on the turf. Uh, I was able to pass it along to the, to the cricket club, take a look. They were very, very excited and happy to see that, uh, that the, the turf itself was going to have the markings on it, which was, uh, they didn't expect it. So that's a little plus. Um, yeah, so that's, it's coming soon. Um, planning board, just a quick update. I've been talking about for, for the last few meetings, uh, we heard PBK 44 MPLC at 44 South Street. Uh, that's the uh, three-story mixed-use rental uh, retail residential property. Um, the planning board reviewed the plans with our borough professionals uh, in an over a series of meetings. We've received input from from residents. Uh, the owner is, is an existing successful businessman and also a resident of the borough. Uh, he was very cooperative, uh, listened to all the input from our professionals, listened to the input from the residents, and, uh, um, you know, he was willing to incorporate that input uh, into his designs. Um, what else can I tell you about the, the plan? It was unanimously approved by the board, and uh, there's, two, there's four apartments. Two apartments are on South Street. They have balconies uh, in, in the front. They're going to be primo locations for our 4th of July celebration and our <laughs> Christmas walk uh, celebrations as well. That would be a helmet. Hey, Dean. Thank you, Mayor. Um, first, uh, uh, this last Saturday, the mayor and I attended the Eagle Scout. Um, we had three uh, seniors from New Providence High School receive the Eagle Scout which is the highest honor that any um, Boy Scout can achieve. Included in that is our uh, very own son of Diane Ballista, Zachary Pereira, uh, Will McCarran, and Max Wazinski. Um, it, was a, it was an amazing ceremony. And one great thing is uh, that I heard is that New Providence produces so many Eagle Scouts. Um, and that is such a great honor, a lot of hard work, many of which uh, we benefit from as a borough from the great improvements uh, to the bocce ball courts. Um, the other one was something at Roberts School, the, the display the case display at Roberts. The display case and the uh, garden at uh, <coughs> the, garden garden at the senior, senior Center. center. Senior center. Um, so our residents um, benefit from the outstanding work of our Eagle Scout. So congratulations to Thank Diane um, and to the boys. And that was a very nice ceremony. 
Um, I also have one small, slightly off of the borough thing to say, and that is uh, this upcoming Saturday, April 1st, is the New Providence High School prom fashion show. Just fashion show. <laughs> it is a fashion show and tricky tray, uh, which benefits all of the students at the high school. So there, um, there are baskets. Uh, that opens at 5 o'clock, and the fashion show uh, begins at 7 o'clock, and there are 90, I just did it, 93 students who are walking. 50 to 52 girls and 41 boys, seniors who are going to be walking. It's going to be a great time, a very nice event. It's open to the public. That's, a, um, that's all almost ages. the entire class. Well, actually, it's a big class. There's it like is 168 a big class. Kids. Out of 168. So still 93 out of 168. Um, it's going to be a great, great event. So it's open to everybody, all families. It's age friendly. Uh, you can buy the tickets online. At no, the, it, at the door. Uh, yeah, at this point, you have to buy them at the door. So 5 o'clock for the uh, basket, 7 o'clock for the fashion show. So come on out and support our kids. Actually, this event has been going on since, I think, the 1980s. Yes. And yes. the other thing is it's student-centered. You've got kids behind the scenes. You have kids helping. That's what's so wonderful about it. So. And in the 80s, that's when fashion was fashion. That's oh, why. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought it was the 70s. But yeah, I I, well, I could be wrong. It could be the 70s. <laughs> Nothing better than a good leisure suit. You might see one on uh, uh, one of our kids. On maybe. Saturday. <laughs> Alex. Uh, nothing to report. Uh, Going to be scheduling some meetings with uh, the engineering team and public works, but more to come. Thank you. Lisa. Um, okay, so before I, I jump into committee reports, I just want to say thank you to the community and to the Lions for their wonderful support. Um, he, um, and the CSA members, we have one here, Matt, uh, thank you for uh, a wonderful event that we had this past weekend at the DeCorso Center it was the pasta dinner basket raffle. It was hugely successful, but um, more important than that is that all the money that we raise goes right back to the community. Um, you know, nearly 100% of it. We basically all we do is pay some, <laughs> some insurance and, and stuff yeah. like that, you know. Um, but it all goes back to help folks in town that need so thank you very much to the community and to the Lions for helping us with that. Um, so let's see here. What do we have? Uh, the library board. Uh, the library board met last week. And one big piece of news there is that uh, we voted on joining the Maine Library Alliance, which is a consortium of 37 libraries and 49 buildings. So why do you say we want to do that? <laughs> we want to do that because it just provides a lot more resources and capabilities to our patrons. So they have a, I wrote it down and now I can't find it, but they have a collection. I think it was about 3.3 million pieces. That's physical. And then they have an extensive digital collection um, where right now, oh, I think I do have it right now. For instance, the wait time for an ebook at the New Providence Library is about six to 12 weeks. Joining the consortium, it will go down to one to five weeks. Um, it's uh, technology wise, we will have a lot more resources. Stacey is ecstatic with the fact that we will have some new technology brought into the library, it's even just our you know, computer stations that are sitting there. Will be upgraded we'll get a couple more of those um there like i said it is a northern new jersey network of 49 different libraries some of the local ones around here chatham madison long hill bernard's harding Lauren park so right now like we can share with summit like at berkeley heights but we'll be able to share with these other libraries and there will be an app so you can just quickly look and see if a book that we don't have is available somewhere else. You can order it. They will deliver it to New Providence. You don't even have to go get it, right? Right, Mark? Yeah, no problem. <laughs> so we're really excited about that. Um, I think it's going to be a really great um, benefit to our patrons. Uh, another thing that I wanted to mention about the library, and this is something that's just really fun, and you guys are going to really get a kick out of this. So our children's librarian, her name is Deborah Sanford, 
um, aka Miss Debbie. Miss Debbie does a YouTube called Pajama Story Time. So Pajama Story Time has gone viral. She is now has Miss Debbie had over a hundred and fifty views in fifty different countries. Okay, fifty different countries. Um, that's just blows my mind. Forty eight thousand. 400 unique viewers um, and all like I said all different countries including Monaco Sri Lanka Brazil Vietnam Russia Russia it's the nice. analytics from it it's mind-blowing um, so she is famous and she is putting New Providence on the map okay uh, they told the story of a little boy that walked into the children's uh, the children's library and he looked at her and he goes Oh my God, you're Miss Debbie. Mm -hmm. You know, because he's only ever seen her on YouTube, right? And now here she is in flesh and blood. But um, such a great story, right? I love that. Cool. <laughs> Did I miss anything? There? I think I got it. So that's uh, that's the library doing Maybe great things. Maybe we should recruit her to the State Department. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Library's always doing great things. And that's it. That's, that's all it. I got. Yep. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just really quick, I want to remind people as the weather's getting warmer and we're all outside moving about, um, April is distract, Distracted Driving Month. Uh, the police will be setting up details um, to help us uh, be reminded that, you know, eyes on the road. Um, there is also um, a lot of construction projects that are still ongoing in town. Um, which kind of lend towards more distracted driving. So just a heads up while we're all out there on the road, PSE&G is still out there, the water company is out there. We're going to be starting our own paving projects in a few weeks, uh, and as well as sidewalks and curbing. So um, just a heads up while you're out there driving, walking, biking, however you're getting around town. It seems like every single street has, has flashing lights. The other thing I want to bring up is that the brush pickup Starts April 3rd, so Monday. that's Monday. next Monday. Monday. So, thank God, because I have a lot of bags. So, okay. At this time, we have public comments. Anybody wishing to address council, please give their name and address. Yes, Ellen. <clears throat> Thanks for putting in, uh, thinking about putting in bike racks. I'll take credit for the recipe. Use, it's the downtown improvement district. It's a downtown district. improvement district. That's right. It's the downtown improvement district. They own the property, so they were able to put them in. Yep. Encourage them to do it. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I brought this up before. I want to talk a little again about the amplification system. Um, as you know, over the years, I've brought up the issues about accommodations for people with, with hearing impairments, and, uh, and I continue to have some concerns about that. But tonight, um, I want to uh, raise another issue related to the equipment, and um, that is that I, I didn't stay for the entire meeting last time, but I did watch the video. And um, I, there are some issues with, with the video and the use of, use of the audio equipment. Um, and I'm going to give you a couple of examples. Um, you know, during the meeting, there was a, a couple that came up and, and discussed the issue of, uh, the issue is not important, but they were talking about the, the union, um, the, the road on union and the sidewalk. And um, what was important was that the, the husband, when he was speaking, um, was fine. He was here. The problem was that his wife, was here, and on the video, I don't know how it's going to come out tonight, but on the video, it can be difficult for people, um, not not just people with uh, hearing impairments. Um, also, during the same conversation, um, Chief Hen was speaking from the audience. It, it, it doesn't work for your video, and it, it, it defeats the entire purpose of doing the video. So, <laughs> I, I'm just... I'm just bringing it up that it's it's more complex than just 
people that have hearing impairments. It also impacts them. Just exactly. any citizen exactly. wanting to, to look at it. Up. And, take care of that. and I have a simple solution for you. Adopt the system and the protocol that's used by the Board of Education. I have gone to meetings there, and it is perfect. Um, they have microphones that you have to push the button, and it lights up. And what that does is it, it identifies for the speaker that here's the microphone. I need to pay attention to it. Uh, it when someone is speaking away from the microphone, they always have a handheld microphone in their hand. So that when they're pre making presentations, even with you in, in the front at the beginning of the meeting, they have a handheld microphone. It, it works, it's, it's excellent. Um, the other advantage is in watching the video that it eliminates the occasional distractions from coughing uh, and other distractions that may come over the, the live mics. Uh, you all do an excellent job of, uh, of keeping quiet and not talking and, and getting anything said on, you know, the, the, the famous live mic problems that people have. So you do an excellent job of that. Um, so I, I think that if you just went down to the Board of Education and watched uh, what they do, it, it's a really easy solution, I think. It's just, and it, it, it works. I hope you'll do it. Um, I wanted to say one other thing. I, I just want to make mention five facts. And I want, I'm not going to mention them with any um, comment or anything. I just want to mention five facts. And the reason I bring them up is, is again, the, another shooting at a school and, and uh, innocent people um, being murdered. And so uh, here are the facts. Um, we're the only developed country where civilians own military style weapons. For every 100 people that live in the United States, there are 120 uh, guns or weapons. We've had 130 mass shootings in less than 90 days this year so far. 33 of those shootings were schools. If by comparison, the last time that there was a school shooting in the United Kingdom was 26 years ago. We're waiting for the next one next week or tomorrow. Finally, the leading cause of the death of children once out of infant, infancy is bullets from guns. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else wish you to address council? Seeing no one, I declare the public comments closed. We'll go to formal action. I need a motion for items one through 20, please. So moved. A second. Call, please. Mrs. Beliska? Aye. Mr. DeSarno? Aye. Mr. Kaminsky? Aye. Mrs. Jeffrey? Yes. Mr. Kogan? Yes. Mrs. McKnight? Yes. Okay. Before we adjourn, I just want to wish everybody for a uh, happy Easter and holy and uh, Passover. 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 I, there's so many in April. Mm -hmm. So uh, I just want to say. Just, just be safe out there. And Mr. Swanson did have a point. You know, you need to you always be aware of your surroundings. You know, you never know what's going to happen. So at that, I will ask for a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second that. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. No, so be it. Thank you for coming tonight. Thank you. Thank you.